Okay, it's tune-up equipment day. I didn't have time to tune up my equipment and clean it yesterday. That was the game plan, but since we had a rain delay, I will have to do that today. And so, I have a few things I want to try out. I want to start, I want to go buy a, a wash and wax concentrate from my local auto parts store and apply that to a sprayer I got for free from this one company. They said, you know, give our sprayer a shot. And I'm like, well, I don't spray chemicals. I don't spray, you know, fertilizer or anything like that. And they sent it to me anyway. So I'm gonna be using it for like a wash and wax uh, applicator, All right? That's the word, that's the correct word. So we're gonna go to the art store and hopefully they have a concentrated wash and wax mix. If they don't, at least a wash concentrate where we can, you know, mix our water and use it in the um, sprayer. And I'll show you the sprayer and how I mix everything as well. All right, so I've seen this one. High foaming. Then I saw this. I think I might try this out. Actually, I got something else instead. I got some super clean. It's a degreaser and it's a concentrate mix, so you just have to mix it correctly, and dilute it with the amount of water, it has labels on the back, how much parts of water and how much parts of product. So we're gonna add that to our sprayer and then apply it to our mowers. And it does say it is pretty safe, but you have to, you make sure it doesn't stay on the mow machine for a very long time. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna scrub this stuff into my paint of my mowers. I'm just going to spray it and then um, wash it off with the pressure washer. So that's what I'm going to do. But you be careful when you buy products, test it on a small portion of your mower and make sure that it doesn't you know, eat away at your clear coat or fade away your clear coat. You wanna make sure that before you, um, before you do your whole machine and then figure out that it does ruin your paint. So be careful when you buy uh, cleaners and degreasers, especially concentrates. All right, so we got that to take home and pressure wash, that to take home and pressure wash and kind of clean up a bit. And then we need a dump we collected some grass and clumps from yesterday. And also, we need to take the sprayer. There it is, take that. And that's actually gonna stay at home because again, we're only gonna be using it to apply a degreaser on my mowers. And since this place doesn't have water or electricity, we can't use a pressure washer. So we'll have to use the pressure washer at home and that's why we'll have the sprayer at home as well. We also need to take this, I'm gonna clean it up, my edger, and definitely clean up my trimmer. Look at all this caked debris. So we'll get those items on the truck, get them cleaned up and be back here and start sharpening blades and inspecting our oil levels and things of that nature. So. Without any further delay, I'll see you at home. All right, so we're back at home. We got all the equipment laid out. We got the pressure washer ready. And we got our neighbors working, power raking their yards. So what I'm reading from the super clean is for full strength, it's a one to one ratio. And for outdoor lawn mowers, you need it at full strength, which is one to one. So. Uh, I wish they had ounces to gallons on here, but I guess we'll deal with one to one is one gallon of this stuff to one gallon of water. I think that's the correct ratio. If I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments down below, all right? <laughs> but I usually don't dilute anything, any of my, you know, any products. I usually buy those already diluted sprays, like ready to go sprays. So don't deal much with concentrates, but one to one full strength i think that's what we need so we'll do one dump this whole thing in the sprayer we'll be probably right there since it's one gallon and then fill the water up to here shake it up and that will be our mix so i think i think all right <laughs> 
So let's get the water in first, and then we'll we'll add the uh, super clean, shake it up, and apply it to our machines. But what I want to do first is blow off any leaves or debris that could be loosely blown off with a Milwaukee blower that we have over there. It's a little dark. Ooh. Milwaukee blower. So, oh. I guess, I guess the neighbor is not power raking anymore. He power raked, he cleaned it all up with the lawnmower, and now he's aerating it. That's pretty cool. Beautiful day out. I'm just enjoying the sun. Perfect time to pressure wash equipment. Not too cold. Everyone's out working, cleaning up leaves, debris, limbs, cutting grass even. People are cutting grass already, so. Anyways. Let's, uh, let's get to mixing and let's get to spraying. I should also mention before you do anything with like chemicals or degreasers, please put on some gloves. You just never know, especially with concentrates. You don't want to get it on your skin because they might start stinging and burning. Well, that's a one to one and we got two, two gallons. So we're sitting at the two mark right there. But that's pretty dark. I don't know how I feel about the one to one. I think it might be a little too strong. I think it might be a little too strong. So I'm, for my personal, I'm thinking should I do two to one? <laughs> Cause it, it does seem a little bit too much. If I do two to one, I'll get more product out of it or I'll get more usage out of it. And I think, I don't think I need it to be that strong. Cause it's, my equipment's not super greasy, super dirty. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do two to one. And over time, if I start to see that it could probably be diluted to one to one, I'll do one to one, all right? So we're gonna do two to one. All right, so first off, I'm glad I diluted it two to one because I applied it to my steel RMA 510V mower and the orange, it was, I don't know if it was the metal. I think it was more of like the decal. It started to, uh, you know, the orange started to come off of it. I'm like, I thought it was the paint, but I think it was the sticker up front. And so I guess it doesn't do well on stickers. That's noted. But two to one worked great. And again, you get more product out of it if you do a two to one mix. So let me show you the result. And sometimes, actually before I show you the result, sometimes I like to um, snow foam after I wash. And I don't know where my snow foam cannon is. Currently don't see it. But I use like the Honeydew snow foam. It's an auto wash made by chemical guys. It's a really good product. Oh, here's my, it was hiding. I didn't see the nozzle. Here's my snow foam. So it's just made by Sun Joe and it works really well, but my, I keep my equipment pretty clean. And so I rarely have to use this. And now with, especially with a uh, spray degreaser, the degreaser does a phenomenal job. So I'd only use this when I really want to like more of do like a wash and wax type of deal. So, so yeah, 
works pretty good. Let me show you the result. Clean the wheels really nice. Even the smaller ones. And it looks like, oh, one thing we missed, we need to go over the underside of the flap. We'll have to spray that way so we don't get into the deck. Spray it that way and then spray off the wheel again. So that's what we'll do. Since we did mulch this week, this side, got both of the wheels nice, white, clean. This wheel's clean. And our trimmer shaft, no grass on it. Uh, at home trimmer FS, FSA 90 cleaned up. I need to put the guard back on it BR 700 gas tanks the number one area that gets dirty so we clean that up our edger and our mower So this is the part where it started to fade I think this is like a sticker or something I don't know but it started to like leak orange. I was like, oh no, but still nice and shiny. So pretty good if you ask me. All right, this is actually day two, it's Monday and I have to go and finish up sharpening the blades. I gotta show you guys, but it's 11 o'clock. I spent all morning editing videos and uploading them. And I'm also uploading on Rumble now, so that platform as well. I'm uploading all of my videos. That's a work in progress. But anyways, uh, we gotta get some food and look where I'm at. We got all these trailers here. Different style food, Korean, pizza, taco, Mexican, sandwiches. But my favorite spot, I like Las Brazas, but my favorite, Zach's Smoke Shack. Oh yeah, the ultimate barbecue spot. All right, now uh, here at Zach Smoke Shop. Now, you're not Zach, you're- uh, well, I'm his dad. You're I'm his Ron. dad, all right, Ron. Hey guys, come on down, <laughs> yeah. got great food. All right. Uh, just, we have to hurry because the fire might- All right, real quick. So we got up here, what we got? Those are tri-tips. Yep. And, oops, right over here, we got the ribs, I think. Woo! Oh, all right. All right, got it. <laughs> Smoke in the eyes. <laughs> I forgot to ask, what chips do you use? Uh, we, uh, right now we're just using apple, uh, but a lot of times, most of the time we use alder. Alder? Yeah, but right apple. now we just have apple, any hardwood works. Okay. Yeah, your cherry, apple. Pay. Yep, Zach's Smoke Shop out here, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Got my meal, and uh, as you can see, we're surrounded by food trucks. So there's a lot of options here, but I like my barbecue. Oh. So we got smoked tri-tip, trimmed fat, sauce on the side. That's just how I personally like it. We got my mac and cheese and baked beans with bacon and onion. Ooh, so good. I'm gonna go ahead and eat this, and then we're gonna go ahead and my mouth was watery. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and eat this and then we'll start uh, sharpening blades, all right? So it's pretty easy to remove the blade because it shows you the arrow to unlock, which is basically to remove it, and uh, another arrow in the opposite direction clockwise to thread it on. So I'm using a 5 8 impact socket and a impact, uh, just a impact gun to remove it. And again, we're going counterclockwise to remove the blade. Um, you can use a pair of gloves. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and put on some gloves because sometimes when you grab these uh, blades, they might be sharp and they might cut you. So you wanna be careful when you do this. There we go. And you can remove this as well. This is just, it's super easy to install. I'll show you how to install this little fan um, back on. And what this does is I believe it just cools the insides of the motor here. Um, and it's it's done so by when, when the blade rotates, this thing rotates as well. So it keeps this area cool. So that way you don't run into any overheating issues. 
And after I remove the blade, I always take a little scraper. And in this case, I kind of have like one of those paint scrapers that you can find at a hardware store in the paint section. And you just take it and scrape the grass. Now, you wanna be careful because you don't want to scratch the paint. I know it's kind of impossible, especially with really hard metal scrapers. Uh, but you wanna clean it up as best as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect because you will never get every single piece of grass. But it's easy when you do this to your own mower at home. If you are a lawn care guy, you understand that you're not gonna clean your deck every single time you mow a piece of property. Maybe someone does out there, but I am not like that. So what happens is I get grass that builds up over time. And so if you get the majority of it, you'll be okay. And there we go, a nice big pile of grass. Now that's actually nothing. I've had mountaintops of grass build up underneath this deck, had to clean it out. And you'd be surprised, if you haven't cleaned underneath your mower in a while, you'll actually be surprised how much grass can build up underneath these decks. All right, we got the blade set up on a vise. We'll do one side at a time. And we're gonna be using an angle grinder with an 80 grit uh, paper type sandpaper on it. We're not using a stone. I think stones are a little bit too aggressive. I used to use them in the past and you take off more than you should with the stone. So the paper is a little bit better. Let me know what you guys use if you sharpen blades. So we're going to match the same angle all the way across. Now, since this is a mulching blade, it has a side that's higher than the other. So we're gonna have to be careful with this transition Keep it level all the way through and stop right here. We do not need to cut here. There is no blade edge on this side. So, without any further delay, don't forget your safety glasses if you're doing this at home. Let's begin sharpening. Okay, so pretty good. We feel this back side. You start to feel all of the nicks that are on this back like we have a really big rock chip on the end now sometimes these rock chips you just can't do nothing about them I've always been taught to never sharpen the back side of a blade but it is okay to run just a slight uh, run your grinder slightly to get all of those little nicks that are on the back side of the blade just cut them down you don't want to sharpen you don't you don't want to put an angle on this back side Hopefully you can see it, hopefully it's focusing correctly. Uh, you just wanna nick down all of the rock chips. Okay, so that's what we'll do next. And try to bring this down a bit as well. And that's it. So again, we did not do much to the backside. We didn't put an edge on it, we just cleaned up the nicks. All right. So this blade, this side at least, is ready to go. We're gonna flip it, do the same to the other. Now one thing I do not have here is my magnetic blade balancer. Now it's magnetic on for the blade side, but it does not it's not magnetic for the wall mount. So I'm gonna to have to figure out a way to mount it to this wall and bring it into the shop. But I'm gonna safe to assume that this blade is pretty much well balanced. We didn't take off much. And I spent an equal amount of time grinding on, on both sides. So I know that's not an adequate way. You definitely wanna balance it and also make sure it's not bent. But I don't believe that this blade is bent. I don't know. I don't notice any noticeable like just bending on the corners or anything. And I don't rec. I don't recall hitting any stumps as well. All right. So we're just gonna be safe to assume that this blade is ready to be installed. Let's go ahead and install it on the mower and get two blades off of that X mark. Wow. You know what I just noticed? We're missing a chunk out of this uh, this fan here. I did not notice it just until now. 
Um, we'll, st we'll probably be okay uh, since it will be pretty tight. I don't know if it has to be super balanced or not for this motor, but I'm going to install it, but I definitely will get the shop to order me another one of these. So uh, yeah, wow. I don't know how that happened. I honestly do not know. I do not remember hitting anything that would have potentially caused damage to that part. Anyways, that's the joy of running a lawn care business. Don't need this super tight. There we are. Oh, I have it on the wrong setting. There we go. Now this next part is completely optional, but what I personally like to do is I like to spray my equipment down with like a, a ceramic detailer or a quick spray wax just to kind of keep the paint protected so that way um, the paint and finish on your machines will last for a lot longer. There's guys out there that mow commercially, the big, big companies, they don't take care of their equipment and that's why they go through equipment like fuel, you know? And so every year they're replacing equipment because stuff breaks down. They don't clean underneath their decks. They don't make the outer appearance of the machine nice and shiny. They just, they just, they don't care. And so uh, me as a solo guy, you know, and you maybe as a homeowner or a solo operator, lawn care operator, um, I'd suggest you clean your equipment because that will increase the longevity and it'll make you look nice, clean, representable when you show up to mow your customer's property. And so again, if you want to, if you have all the money in the world to go and spend on new pieces of equipment every single year or two, be my guest. But I'm going to quick wax my machines and make them nice and shiny and presentable. And I guess this trait, this, this trait of mine comes from being a, automotive um i wasn't a mechanic but i was like a auto body shop and detailer and i was doing everything i was painting cars and we always cleaned up the vehicles even if we were just spraying a bumper we would clean the vehicle up for the customer and so i guess that's where i get it from but you know just a quick wipe down goes a long way all right up next we got the x mark stars I just picked this up from Harbor Freight. It's a one and a half ton uh, pump jack. And all we're gonna do is place it dead center. And they make so many other lifts to lift mowers, but I always found out that a floor jack uh, does way better and it's smaller, more compact, less storage space, you know. Now this is where you need to be careful because you'd probably want to place some jack stands underneath and never go off just a floor jack, especially when dealing with heavy equipment. Um, but in this case, I'm going to just use a floor jack. Again, do not, do not do what I do. Always take the extra safety precautions. In this case, I, I've done this so many times and I know I can't use that as an excuse, but uh, at this moment, I don't have any floor jacks. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this is locked in place very well and secure. And I'm not going to put my body all the way underneath this deck. I'm just going to impact the bolts off super quick and then just lower this for, for extra safety. Um, I'm going to make sure that the deck is pretty well clean underneath with the scraper. But again, you don't want to go underneath this whole deck, especially if you don't have any extra um, floor jacks underneath to support instead of just using just a floor jack, okay? All right, so we're using a three quarter inch socket. And again, we're gonna do this with our impact gun. Take it off and move on to the next one.
All right, same thing with the this mower. Just gonna give it a nice quick wipe down with the ceramic detailer or spray racks, whatever you got to keep the shine going. So another thing you should probably inspect is your air filter and your oil and your hydrostatic transmission fluid level. Now, again, for those of you that are homeowners, it's nice to check your oil on your push lawnmower and that's all you need to check really. Um, on a regular tune-up, yearly tune-up, you'll want to change your oil and your spark plug and probably change your blade. I mean, if it's got really bad nicks and if it's all rounded, it's probably best to replace it. Um, but other than that, that's really it. For those of you guys that are commercial guys, you want to make sure that, again, check your fluid levels, your air filter, and also top off your fuel with some sea foam. Here's what it looks like. And yeah, I'll show you how to and how much to add. Let's go ahead and place you up here. Open up the gas tank. And the cool thing about Seafoam is it works for your uh, fuel system and your oil system. So you can add a little bit to both. Now, gotta open my fresh can up. And look how much I'm gonna add, all right? Just watch. So I have a full, actually I have like a three quarter tank of gas in here. When I used to work as a small engine mechanic in the shop, we always used sea foam. And I'm not sponsored to say any of this. Just for my, uh, I think I had like three years of experience repairing small engines. We'd always use sea foam and we've resurrected some lawnmowers that wouldn't start. So next time your lawnmower doesn't start, before you take it to a small engine shop, try buying some sea foam. It's only like seven or eight dollars. Add it to your uh, gas tank and try to fire up your machine at least, you know, 10, 20 pulls. Now don't wear yourself out, but you know, pull it and prime it if you have a priming system to try to push that fuel because more than likely something's clogging the carburetor main jet that's not allowing fuel to be pushed through to start the machine. So sometimes seafoam does break up deposits and that's why machines start after you've added the seafoam and let it sit for maybe 24 hours if it wouldn't if it won't start at all. But however, keep this in mind. If your machine does start with a seafoam and it starts and dies and you keep doing that and it starts and dies, starts and dies, don't continue doing that. Take it to a shop. They'll still have to clean your carburetor in order to have your machine run um, without, you know, it starting and stopping and starting and dying. All right. And that's all I have left to do for today. Today's Monday. That's all I had planned to do. Uh, tomorrow, if it does continue raining, I won't go out and work. I'll come back here and I'll do a tune-up video and fix video. How to repair the choke knob on the KM131R. And I'll also do a separate video on tuning up the steel BR700. So... Thank you again so much for watching. This has been Phil at Phil's Lawn Care and Phil's Lawn Care Plus, both channels. If you learned something today, please leave your comments down below. Let me know how I did on this video. If this video bored you, please let me know. Please give me your feedback on what I should improve, what I should show more of, what I should show less of. If you don't like to see food, let me know. Um, but I try to kind of make it into like a vlog style video some of these videos into like a vlog style so they don't get boring but again let me know i want your feedback on on the video and hey we all improve together and i definitely improve with your guys's feedback so leave it in the comment section down below smash the like button always make sure that you are subscribed and hitting the hit the notification bell to never miss any more upcoming videos as soon as they come out you get a notification that's pretty cool you'll be one of the first viewers to see my videos. Thank you again so much. God bless you. We will see you in the next one.